this video is about verbs so a verb is a word that expresses an action or state of what being okay there are three kinds of verbs one is action verbs that's doing word example go dance two linking verbs example to be become appear look and then see auxiliary verbs which is also called modal verbs or helping verbs examples will shall may do have and etc so note that sometimes it is acceptable that when verbs are classified into only two groups all the linking verbs are considered as what auxiliary verbs so we say that together with what the mugda auxiliary so let's take these verbs and then explain and give some examples to them i mean the action verbs the linking verbs and the auxiliary verbs so an action verb or doing word describes the behavior or action of someone or something okay so action verbs may express physical action for example clap or mental action or activities example to think so let's consider the following action words underlined one francis told us that he painted this nice portrait so the underlined words told painted are all an action word or a doing word Dockers ordered for a plate of rice and ate or uh, and ate it all uh, alone. And the spectators cheer when their teams would play soccer. So these are the some of examples of what action verbs. So let's go to linking verbs. Linking verbs are verbs that link the subject with a word or words in the predicate. So these are the verbs um, that link the subject with a word or words in the predicate. So note that every sentence is made up of what subject and predicate. So subject plus predicate equal to sentence. Linking verbs usually do not express action. They link or connect the subject to another noun or adjective. In the predicates and this process makes them what intransitive verbs so common linking verbs are the various forms of the verb to be another verb that function as the verb to be so let's look at the verb to be am s a was were be being been and then other verbs are smell look taste feel become seem grow sound appear remain and etc so these are the linking verbs and this verb can be used in what in sentences so let's look at some ver the verbs the principal grew impatient as the truant boy kept challenging him so the verb is grew links a principal and impatient ah this story sounds fictitious or untrue so the verb sounds links the subject story and what and fictitious i am a lecturer the verb am links the subject i and lecturer the flowers look nice the verb look links the subject flowers and the objective or the object nice in the predicate so note in the in general most linking verbs can be identified by replacing or substituting them with is or was. In other words, a linking verb functions as what is or are in the present tense and was or were in the past tense. So let's look at some examples of this present and the past tense of the linking verbs. Example 1. The food tastes so or the food is sir so you see that taste as a linking verb is replaced by s in the first one the, the food taste sir or the food is what sir so the taste that has that has what as a linking verb is replaced 
by S. Let's do number two. He became restless after the fight. Or he was restless after the fight. So here too, became is replaced by was. Okay. So note that um, a verb can be called a linking verb when the sentence still makes sense. Even if, when you replace the verb. That is in question with uh, is, was, where, or are. Okay, for example, um, the boys appear ready for the game. The boys are ready for the game. The boys seemed ready for the game. The boys were ready for the game. Okay, so now let's go to uh, auxiliary verbs, which is, which can be called modal verbs or helping verbs. Auxiliary verbs are usually called helping verbs and this explains their function as what helpers of the main or action and linking verbs in performing their function or actions so what we are trying to say is, um, in the short auxiliary verbs or modal auxiliaries are used to help main verbs to perform their actions in sentences so examples of modal verbs are shall should Will, would, can, could, may, might, must, ought to, used to, need, the, do, does, did, have, has, had, and the rest. So note that the verbs to be and to have are also auxiliary verbs. So let's consider the example below. The boy will play tennis every day. You see that the verbs are will and play but the will is helping the main verb which is what will so the will is as what is function as auxiliary okay and number two they are studying english a is used as what an auxiliary verb to help studying okay a is used as what an auxiliary verb to help the, the adver, main verb studying so now let's go to the usage of verb so usage of verb okay a verb can be used in various forms depending on the following aspects so the aspects are one number two person three voice four tense five transitive or hot intransitive so let's discuss them one by one number Inverse, in the, um, inverse, so when we say number, we are talking about inverse. Number indicates whether a verb is singular, only one in number or plural, more than one in number. So the verb and its subject must both be singular or both be plural. So let's look at some example. Rose likes mangoes. Rose likes mango. She, only one. That is only rose, only one. Matches singular verb likes. Rose likes mango. Rose, that's one. Matches singular verb likes. So that's and then example number two. The girls like mangoes. The girls like mangoes. Girls. The girls. The that's the plural. The girls represent what plural form the uh, plenty many matches a plural verb like matches a plural verb like so i hope you do understand with the number in terms of verb so let's go to person in verbs person indicates whether the subject of the verb is first second or third person and whether the subject is singular or plural we did this in our previous um, video uh, video about um, uh, pronouns so first person I play that's singular we play that's plural second person you play and the same as you play so second person the singular can be what plural and then the plural can be what singular you play singular you play a singular third person he she it play he or she or it plays. He or she or it plays. 
instead they play they play that is plural he or she or it plays or they play that is a plural so we said that the we, we can talk about the voice that's number three the voice okay voice we have active voice and what passive voice so what is an active voice an active voice indicates that the subject of the verb is acting or in action so a verb is in the active voice when the subject which is matching it performs the action of the verb so simply put when a subject of a sentence represents the doer of the action the verb is said to be in the form of what active voice so for example Darkon likes Victoria. Darkon likes Victoria. Darkon likes Victoria. Note that Darkon, that's the subject, is the doer of the action like. Do you understand? Or uh, number two, Daniel punished me yesterday. Note that Daniel is the doer of the verb, which is the punished. Now let's go to the passive voice. Passive voice indicates that the subject of the verb is acted upon, not the actor directly. So, a verb is in the passive form when the subject matching it is the receiver of the action of the verb. So, simply put, when the subject of a sentence represents the receiver or sufferer of the action, the verb is said to be in the passive voice. For example, the secretary was slapped by her boss. The secretary, subject is the secretary, slapped is the action. So note that the action slapped was suffered or received by the subject of the sentence, the secretary. So here you see, the doer is not the subject. Note also that more often than not verbs are used more in the active voice and less frequently in the passive voice. So let's discuss when to use the passive voice when to use the passive voice one when what is done the action is considered to be more important than who did it the doer the emphasis is on the receiver or sufferer of the action rather than the doer example my car was stolen by a thief so uh, my car was stolen by a thief a television set repaired by the man number two when the doer of the action that is the subject is neither certain or known example they were killed during the civil war killers not known so the secretary has been invited the one who in invited is not known that's why we say when the doer of the action is neither certain or known so when the doer number that's number three when the doer perform or when the doer or performer of the action is clearly known or obvious and therefore does not need to be stated or mentioned example i was born and bred in in the gambia the unmentioned parents are known to give birth i was created to be a vector we all know the doer of the verb created is what god so who need to mention what so no need to what to mention to mention god number four when it is intended to avoid taking the responsibility for an action or trying to avoid the same of the one or the brain behind an action example i have been advised to suck you the government is accused of corruption so these are the use of the passive voice one is um when what is done the action is considered to be more um to be more to be more um important than who did it that's the doer so the emphasis is the one or the emphasis is on the receiver or the sufferer of the action rather than the doer and the number two says when the doer of the action that subject is neither certain or unknown and then number three is when the doer perf or the performer of the action is clearly known or obvious and therefore does not need to be stated or mentioned.
So then the last one says, when it is intended to avoid taking the responsibility for an action or trying to avoid the name of the one or the brain behind um, an action. Okay, so let's talk about the transitive and intransitive verb. Trans a transitive verb is a verb which directs its action towards someone or something or a receiver or a receiver which is usually called the object of the verb. In other words, a transitive verb is a verb whose action is being received or suffered by an object. Verbs that need object to complete their action or the thought are called transitive verbs. So note that action verbs are either transitive or intransitive. Examples, the dog saw the man. So is the transitive verb that transfers its action to the object, the man. Nkechi admires Sarah. Admires is an action transferred to the object Sarah. The actor appreciated the applause. Applause is the object of the verb appreciated. My uncle sent money to us. Money is a direct object to the verb sent. So note that the object of a transitive verb the object of a transitive verb is called the direct object. If it receives the action directly from the subject, that's without any uh, preposition, pronoun or other words in between. So example, both told a story. A story is a direct object. So told is a verb. Then the story is the object. Okay. And um, an indirect object receives an, um, the action of a transitive verb indirectly or with some interference of pronouns, prepositions, and others. Example, Emmanuel told me a story. Here, the story is an indirect object of the verb told because it does not become or it does not come directly after the verb or action. So the pronoun me comes in between. So intransitive verb. An intransitive verb does not direct its um, action toward, away, um, toward anyone or anything. So the intransitive verb does not have an object receiving the action. Example, the actor left no object. Everyone's left no object. The man, the man died, no object. The rain fell heavily yesterday, no object. The priest preached wonderfully, no object. Okay, so now let's talk about the last one, the tense. Tenses refers to the change that takes place in the usage of the verb to indicate time of happening. Tenses tell the time of action. Tenses occur only in verbs. So there are three main tenses. One is simple present tense, simple past tense, and present perfect tense. Or uh, perfect tense. Simple present tense, simple past tense, and perfect tense. However, some other aspects of these three main tenses need to be discussed to allow proper and comprehensive usage of tenses in modern English. So let's look at some of the rules on tenses. So rule one, simple present tense. Simple present tense expresses an action which is happening at the present time or which happens continuously.